welcome to a fifth Sunday. In case you didn't know, August has five Sundays. And in case you didn't know me, every time we have a fifth Sunday, we might do things a little bit different. So our call to worship this morning is designed to get you um, up and moving on a soggy, wilty kind of day. If you don't know this song, if you never went to camp or you never heard the song, just you'll catch on quick, I promise. There are very simple words to this song, and we're going to divide in half. Y'all are the alleluias. Praise you the Lord. So basically, if you need the words, they're in the bulletin. And if you don't, whatever. Oh, oh, the other part is, when your part comes, you stand up if you can. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Good morning. Thanks for that aerobics lesson. It's great to see everyone. Our final uh, summer worship combined service. Next week, we go back to normal, whatever that is, schedule. 8.30 and 11 o'clock services. Church school will begin next week as well. Everyone is entitled to be a part of the church school, and we encourage you to do that. It's for all ages. They will gather in Fellowship Hall at 9.30, so between the services. So please give that some consideration, and we hope to have a great start to the church school year. Can I have a big yeehaw? Yeehaw! Wow, and it's not even Michelle's birthday. That's great. <laughs> hey, today's the last day for you to get your uh, Texas Roadhouse tickets. This is a fundraiser by uh, the United Methodist Women, which is a great organization here at Central. Uh, someone will be selling tickets probably in both Texas, probably over in Welcome Center mostly. So uh, please give that consideration. September 10th is the day when that event will occur. You can eat your meal at home, take it out from here, or there'll be tables set up here where you can eat with some other members here at Central. So it'd be, it's a great thing. Thanks to the United Methodist Women for doing that. Tickets are $12 and $4. <coughs> Program councils. First Tuesday of the month, starting in September, that's this coming Tuesday, 7 o'clock. If you're on a program council, uh, please make note of that, and they'll see you in Fellowship Hall this Tuesday night. Today is also the two cents a meal deal. I have mine, so if you have yours, ushers will be waiting at the door to collect that after the service today. We have two-minute speakers today. First of all, we're going to have Kelly Devine, and then Pastor Michelle would like to say something to you all. Hey, good morning, Central Church. Morning. Welcome to the last worship service of the summer, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, first things first, uh, as I dashed away on my last Sunday for my vacation, I realized that I had not made provisions to thank my personal heroes or give out any information on the carnival. So I'll give you an update right now. Picture it, in the pouring rain, per our invitation, we had more than 50 families come to enjoy music and food and fellowship right here in our parking lot. And it rained, and it rained some more. So I wanna say thanks to so many people. It's a huge list. Um, I'm not gonna name people individually, but 
I have to thank first the donators of supplies. I no more put the supply requests out there and they were gone. All the items came in. Thank you so much. Uh, you actually literally made this event free, okay? I, uh, I also had my second thank you is to my helping heroes who they carried things, set things up, they served it and they cleaned and they made it just so easy. They made it so easy for these people to come and enjoy and spend time here. It went seamlessly. And again, it rained. <laughs> and then I, got, I have to tell everyone here, I feel so blessed to be part of a church that cares for everyone around them. So thank you, thank you, and thank you again. And again, it's raining. <laughs> So, as I mentioned, the end of summer and the beginning of my, my little minute speech here, next Sunday, as Bruce mentioned, Sunday, September 7th is Rally Day. So all the grades, everyone, is meeting in Fellowship Hall at 9.30. And this is going to be to kick off and register and meet your teacher and just to have a whole lot of fun. Okay, we're going to focus on heroes, real life heroes, people in our lives, people from the Bible. We're just going to have a huge amount of fun this year. I'm going to change it up a little bit. So after today, after service in, the, in our Welcome Center, I'm going to have forms. If anybody wants to take a form for their children to pre-register so you don't have to do it next week, feel free. Um, adults who are looking for Sunday school, we are going to, we're not going to start Adult Sunday School next week, but come on down to Fellowship Hall, maybe have a little fun with us. I'm going to have a uh, kind of an outline of the classes that we're going to offer, and they're going to start on the 14th. Okay? So I want to thank everybody just one more time. And uh, again, it's a pleasure to work here. Thanks so much. And our thanks go to Kelly for putting all of that together, this mastermind job. Um, it's a pr prodigious amount of work that she put in leading up to the, count, uh, to the carnival in the rain. I just wanted to um, take a moment to invite you to another adult education opportunity. Um, this one not in the building, not on Sundays, but uh, we're going to start a book study at the Greek Key Restaurant, which is right around the corner. If it's raining, you can take an umbrella. Rain. Love it. Um, we're going to uh, study a series of books. We're starting with a book by Bart Ehrmans, who's a New Testament scholar, uh, called Jesus Interrupted. Um, everything you didn't know about the Bible and maybe never wanted to, uh, we are going to make our way through that book. You don't have to have read any of it before you come. Uh, on, on, on Monday the 8th, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm so excited about this. Monday, September 8th at 7.30 p.m. at Great Key Restaurant. Drop in, drop out, come as you like. Uh, if you have trouble getting hold of the book, it is available on Amazon. It's available at Barnes & Noble. Uh, if you have trouble or can't manage to get a book, let me know and we will take care of that for you. And if you are thinking about coming, it would be helpful for me to tell Nick at the Great Key kind of how many heads to expect. He's given us the whole back room and is very excited about us being there. If you miss one, it's really okay. <laughs> drop in, drop out, come as you can. Uh, it's very informal. So I hope you'll think about coming to this different kind of study that we're having, and uh, I hope to see you there. The first scripture reading is in the book of Psalms. It's in Psalm 105. And we're going through verses 1 through 6, then 23 to 26, and verse 45. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his needs among the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember, 
the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he uttered, all offspring of his servant David, uh, Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. And the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he then turned to hate his people to deal carefully with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he chose, praise the Lord. May God's blessings rest upon his holy word. Let's pray together. God of mystery and might, whose wonderful works are always to be remembered, move in our lives, change our minds, soften our hearts, and direct our feet that we may follow you more faithfully, live more fully, and love everyone like you love us. Fill this church with your spirit today. Fill our lives with your power and purpose. Make us your people once again and for always. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Maybe if you sit down one more step and then everybody can see this. Let's let, let's let all the grown-ups see all this big pile of backpacks we got here. Come on, Dan. Sit down. Can you have a seat? Look at them all. You see all these backpacks? There's a My Little Pony one, and there's a camouflage one. What do all these backpacks? I have, I have a queen. Yep, and there's one with sharks on it. Wow. And butterflies, and there's, Bruce, yours looks kind of plain there. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need a Hello Kitty backpack. You have a tie-dye backpack. So what are all these backpacks for? School. Are we starting school this week? Is that good? Are you ready to start school? I'm in 50th grade. He's in, he's in grade 50. What grade are you in? What grade are you in? You're in second grade and? First one will be second grade. First grade, second grade. What other grades are we in? Fifth grade. Fifth grade, third grade. I'm kindergarten. Kindergarten. First. First grade. All right, so lots of people going to school today. And there's a giraffe backpack, too, because you're going to preschool, right? Yeah. Yeah, or kindergarten. Preschool? Yeah. yeah. So today, what, we're, what we want to do today is remember that even when you go to school, God goes with you. And God loves you every moment of every day, even when you're at school, doing all the stuff you do at school. So do you know what a blessing is? Can anybody tell me what a blessing is? It's to remember God. That's a really good definition. What else might a blessing be? It's a way of saying thank you to God for the, for the chance to go to school. Do you know there's lots of kids that don't get to go to school? So we give thanks to God that we get to go to school and we get to meet teachers and new friends and we get to, uh, we get to learn things every day. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer for you all, and we're going to say a prayer over your backpacks, which sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? But you know what? Those backpacks go to school with you every single day, don't they? Yeah, they do, unless you forget, right? So they go to school and work with you every single day. So what we're going to do is we're going to say a prayer, all of us together. And I'm going to have you come, can you, if you can come stand around the backpacks a little bit, and we're going to have you put your hands on the whole pile. Can you do that? A long, 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 long time ago. That was a sign of blessing. You'd put your hands on somebody to bless them, and you'd pray over them. So we're going to pray over the backpacks and pray for your school year and pray for you and pray for your teachers. So I'm going to invite you to come, come stand around them and put your hand somewhere on the pile of backpacks. Can you do that? And I'm going to invite you all where you are 
to not come and put your hands on the backpacks, but pretend that you are putting your hands on the backpacks. Can you do that? Just extend a hand in blessing as if you are touching this whole pile of kids and backpacks. All right, can you repeat after me when we say this prayer? Do you think you can do that? Everybody set? Everybody got a hand on the pile somewhere? All right. Can we pray? Just repeat after me, all right? Caring God, we offer these backpacks as a sign of our thanks for all you will do with us and for us this year at school. We bless these backpacks as companions to us as we learn and grow. May they carry food for bodies and food for thoughts. Let them remind us that you are as close to us as the backpack on our back, always and forever. Amen. 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 Okay. Now, I think we should also say a prayer for your teachers, shouldn't we? Just a little bit. Those teachers take good care of you all day, don't they? They care about you. Everybody got your backpack? Can we, can we, can we just sit with our backpack for a second and say a prayer for our teachers? Dear God, we thank you for teachers, for those who notice every child's gift, for those who serve as much by listening as by teaching, for those who make learning fun and meaningful, for those who are there before the first child arrives and who leave after the last child goes home, for those who dream of a next generation to be great and work to make it so and for all those who bless these children every day. We give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming up, and thank you all for bringing your backpacks, and I hope and pray, and all these people, you see all these people out here? They hope and pray that you have a wonderful year at school too. Isn't that great? Have all these people hoping and praying that for you? So thanks for coming up, and you can go back and sit with your grown-up now if you like. Somebody's sunscreen fell out of their backpack. <laughs> what, whoa. We don't need Parents, check the pack if it had sunscreen before and doesn't now. See, Sarah. No, I don't have a box of crayons in my laptop bag. <laughs> but they sound fun. That was great, thanks Michelle. And thank you for supporting these children today and in the future year. Can we join together in prayer? Holy One, gracious and loving God, we come this morning a little soggy, a little wet around the edges. We hope that our spirits are not as damp as the air around us. We come seeking you. We come looking for your presence in our lives. We come looking for that relationship you offer us. As the seasons change, as, as things in our lives change, sometimes we feel disrupted, sometimes we feel out of sorts, sometimes we feel afraid. So Lord, we ask your blessing 
on all those changes we experience from day to day and month to month, year to year, season to season. Give us courage when we need it. Give us strength when we feel weak. Make us brave that we, we may embrace everything ahead of us, knowing that you are with us in all times, in all ways. We pray this morning, not just for ourselves, but for all those we keep in our hearts. Some we've named out loud, some, some names are deep in our souls. And so in this moment together, we pray for each one, for friends, for family, for neighbors, for situations in this world that need your touch. Where fear seems to triumph, we ask your peace. Where pain seems to be the most that anyone can feel, we ask your comfort. Help us to be your love with hands and feet and skin. Help us to be your heart in this world as we reach those who so desperately need you. We pray all of this this morning in the name of Jesus the Christ. And we offer to you the prayer he first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father in heaven, you have set an example that is hard for us to emulate. As we reflect on the year that's gone by, we thank you, Lord, for all the work that's been done in this church, for anyone who's picked up a paintbrush, scraped a wall, written a letter, given a hug, and said a prayer. We thank you, Lord. Bless our labors, because we know that this money and these gifts and these talents are truly magnified when it's done within the presence of your love. We thank you again. Amen. The second scripture reading today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 31, and I shall be reading from the message. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemies hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. May God add his blessing to the reading and understanding of his holy word.
it mean to be? What does it mean to have the microphone on? What does it mean to be the people of faith? What does it mean to be the church, the community of faith? What does that mean exactly? That's what Paul is getting at with this letter to the church at Rome. What does it mean to be the people of God in the world, people who model their lives on Christ? There's a lot of talk in our culture about Christians who they're supposed to be and who they're not supposed to be, what they're supposed to think and what they're not supposed to think. But the arguments, all those arguments seem to dance around the main subject. The Christianity is fundamentally about a relationship with God that teaches us how to be in relationship with each other. Jesus said it. He said, all the law and the prophets, all the commandments, all the teaching of the faith can be summarized in just two rules. Love God, that's number one, and love your neighbor as yourself, number two. If that is the essence of Christian teaching, I think we're getting a lot of things wrong. We talk a lot about religion and what it means. The story is told that on October 31st, 1517, a monk named Martin, Martin Luther walked to the church in Wittenberg, Germany and nailed a statement of faith to the doors. He was disillusioned and angry at the religion of his church. And he laid out his argument in 95 short points. They weren't really short. The essence of what he said was that when we confuse faith with religion, we've lost our way. His protest, that nailing of the 95 theses on the cathedral door, started the Reformation and gave us our, our name as Protestants. We come together today as a community of faith descended from that act. And the question for us all this Sunday and every Sunday is, are we really here because we want to practice our religion? Or are we here because we want to grow in our faith? In our relationship with God? I really, really hope it's because we want to grow in our faith. I'm not really good at practicing religion. I'm moderately helpful in helping people grow in faith. So, if your reason to be here, to be part of a church, to be part of a community of faith, or even just to visit or stop in once a while, once in a while, if the reason for that is that you want to grow in your faith, we need to remember a few things about what that faith teaches us. We can listen to Paul and hear what we're supposed to be and also what the church is supposed to be if we live out of that faith. First, he says, it's not all about us. Simple, right? Learn how to live with God at the center of all you do, he teaches. Keep that relationship alive, and the rest will come naturally. Live with God first, and then live in service to others. Peterson, in his message version, says, practice playing second fiddle. Our winner-loser culture that we live in tells us that being second is not desirable. Being second means you failed. But for the people of God, that's wrong. Centering our lives on only ourselves cuts us off from relationship with God first and with others. It closes the world around us. It shuts people out. And that's not the way we were created. Now, some of us are really, really super at relationships. And some of us are really, really bad at them. You don't need to self-identify there. But we were built to be in relationship. We can practice and work at them and get better. Paul is saying that when God is at the center of all our relationships, when our relationship with God is first and most important to us, 
Then from that point, we begin to look what real, we begin to understand what real relationships with others look like. Church is the same way. It's profoundly and always true that any church, the church, capital C, exists primarily for those outside itself. That tends to make church people very uncomfortable. Because sometimes we get so caught up in taking care of those inside, taking care of our friends, taking care of those we know, that we lose sight of that peace. Something that's become very clear to me in 18 years of ministry and a little before, and sometimes I lose sight too, is that the one thing the church is about is reaching out and engaging persons who have either never been part of a faith community or who've been hurt by Christianity or its followers. Happens all the time. There are persons in the communities around every church who've never heard about the abundant life that God offers. And it's our work to meet them where they are and how they are in order to offer ourselves as bearers of that story. What that means for any church is that our decisions can't always be made solely on on the basis of what we like or what we've always done. When we start looking outside ourselves in terms of relationship through God, then everything we do becomes part of that relationship. We begin to look at the ways we worship or the ways we discuss politics or theology or faith. We begin to make decisions based on the common good. It's called radical hospitality. It's what Donna read in the Peterson translation as be inventive in hospitality. We can practice it in our personal lives. We can practice it in the church. If we're willing to make decisions based less on us and more on those with whom we were in relationship, then we've, we've made the first step. That means we live our lives going beyond saying, hi, how are you? Hospitality in personal relationships, in our relationship with God, in relationship with people we don't know, means being willing to open ourselves to someone completely foreign to us. Someone who might not be like us in any way at all. You know, it's, it's going to school and making friends with someone you've never met before, or someone who seems very, very different from you. In church, it's welcoming someone who's n- who has never been in church before, who's just worked up the courage to come through these doors for the very first time, and inviting that person into conversation or to sit with you or to go to lunch with you after. Inventive hospitality, radical hospitality, means realizing that we all need love. We all want friends. We all want a safe place to belong. Hospitality is about committing ourselves to become that safe place for someone. That's the heart of building relationships, isn't it? Our best relationships are with people with whom we feel safe. It's what we're built for if we're doing it right. It's about being good friends when being friendly is difficult. It's about making the effort to love someone even when they are particularly unlovable. It's about being a safe place for someone even when it just seems to be too much work or we just don't feel like it. You know people like that? Church is supposed to be that safe place. One of the signs of a thriving church is the relationships that are built as part of that church's life. You know, church should never be about sitting in the pew for the Sunday show. Church at its best is a community of love and acceptance and peace. A place that seeks to make connections between people who would never otherwise encounter each other. Isn't it true that you've met people in church you would never have met in any other way? It's true for me.
what we need to understand about church today is that people are not looking for religion. People are not looking for rules to follow. They're looking for relationships. Relationships with God, relationships with each other. And our job as the church is to connect people with God through the relationships we build here. Paul said that to his churches over and over and over again. Connecting with God is one of the deepest hungers of the human heart. Everyone has the potential for a spiritual life. Everyone. No matter how young, how old, how broken, how whole, everyone has that potential. Connecting with God is the beginning of a spiritual life. It's not the beginning of religion. Do you hear the difference? There are scads of people in this world who talk about being spiritual but not being religious. That's what they're getting at. Hunger for relationship with God and not necessarily hunger for a set of rules and regulations about what to believe. There is a huge difference there. It's the responsibility of every faith community to nurture that gift, that potential in everyone. To offer, to offer opportunities at every stage of life to help persons learn that God is with them in that moment, in every moment. It's a great privilege to accompany each other in that journey. It's a responsibility of every church to encourage that journey to happen in as many ways and at as many times as possible. You know, whether we bless backpacks in a pile or we have kids participate in worship, when we encourage our youth to be leaders in the church, when we provide opportunities for adults to spend time reflecting on their faith and on their spiritual journeys, that's all our job. When was the last time you felt safe enough to talk deeply about your faith or about your doubts or your struggles? Is that a long time? Is it yesterday? Church needs to be the place where it's always safe to do that, where we can learn to do that together without judgment, without criticism. It's a place our children need to know is always there to walk them through whatever struggles they meet, to help them have the life God wants them to have, to be the people God created them to be. Church needs to be the open door for anyone who seeks God. We're the church together, you and me, and all those not yet here. Paul's call to his church in Rome is ours too. It's something that we need to remember every day in our own relationships with God and with each other in every situation. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to what is good. Be good friends who love deeply. Bless your enemies. Laugh with your friends. Share tears when they're sad. Get along with each other. Discover beauty in everyone. Get along with everyone. Random thoughts for Sunday morning as we begin a program year in this church full of education and opportunities and fun for all and fellowship and nurture and all those things we do together as a congregation. May God bless us in the journey. May God bless us as we seek to connect others with God and God's love. It's a challenge, but it's a lot of fun doing it. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing again. Isn't that fun? Let's stand as we do.